on Tuesday, only viewers in some parts of the world will be able to see the moon pass through the darkest part of Earth's shadow for nearly 90 minutes and it's the last one we will see for a while. Here's how you can see it and where you are able to see it from. According to NASA, the final lunar eclipse of 2022 and the last total lunar eclipse until 2025 will take place on Tuesday, November 8th, when the full beaver moon will pass into the darkest part of Earth's shadow for nearly 90 minutes. In East Asia, Australia, the Pacific, and North America, at least some of the lunar eclipse will be visible. Because the first phase of the eclipse will begin at 4.09 a.m. EST, 900 GMT, viewers in the United States and Canada will need to get up early to catch it. According to NASA, the peak of the eclipse, known as totality, will occur between 5.16 and 6.43 a.m. EST, 1016 to 1143 GMT, when the entire visible surface of the moon will be covered by Earth's shadow. The eclipse will then gradually brighten into a partial eclipse for the next hour. On March 14, 2025, the next total lunar eclipse won't occur. The full moon occurs when the Sun, Earth, and Moon align in an invisible 180 degree line about once every 30 days. The full moon typically avoids Earth's shadow while still catching the Sun's light because the Moon's orbit around Earth is slightly tilted relative to the Sun's orbit. However, during a total lunar eclipse, the Moon briefly enters complete shadow as it moves directly behind Earth in relation to the Sun. The darkest part of Earth's shadow, known as the Umbra, falls over the center of the Moon during an eclipse's final totality phase. During totality, the Moon may appear black, but in reality, it takes on a reddish rust color, which is why it is often referred to as a blood moon. This rusty hue is caused by the Rayleigh scattering phenomenon. When daylight crashes into Earth's climate, blue light gets dispersed while red light is refracted, or twisted, all over the world until it lands on the moon. As it sits in the shadow of Earth, this gives our eclipse satellite a ghostly, reddish hue. NASA says that atmospheric conditions over Earth, including the effects of volcanic eruptions, dust storms, and wildfires, determine the exact level of redness on a fully eclipsed moon. You don't need anything special to see the blood moon, but using binoculars or a telescope can help you see the last lunar spectacle of the year better. For those of you that don't know what a lunar eclipse is, here is a little insight. One of the most breathtaking sights in the night sky is a lunar eclipse. The normally pale white moon turns a deep red as it enters Earth's shadow, and this coloration can last for a long time. Similar to solar eclipses, lunar eclipses only occur during one phase of the moon and can be partial or total. The entire moon. Lunar eclipses happen when the moon passes directly behind the Earth and into the Earth's shadow, Dar Patel a space expert at the National Space Center in Leicester, said, in contrast to a solar eclipse, where the moon falls between the Earth and the Sun. That indicates that they always occur at full moon, Patel stated. A full moon occurs when the moon is facing the Sun on the opposite side of Earth. Our planet is preventing sunlight from directly reaching the lunar surface if the moon is in Earth's shadow. It would stand to reason that we wouldn't be able to see the moon at all at this point. However, so that's why lunar eclipses tend to have that blood-red color, Patel stated, because the Earth has an atmosphere, red light ends up being bent around onto the Moon. The seven colors of the Sun's spectrum are the same as those of the rainbow, in addition to infrared and ultraviolet light. According to the European Space Agency, the blue and yellow portions of this spectrum are largely absorbed by Earth's atmosphere during a lunar eclipse allowing the red light to be bent or refracted toward the moon. The exact shade of red we see during an eclipse can be determined by the composition of the Earth's atmosphere at the time. The red color can become more intense the more dust in the atmosphere, Patel stated. Particularly, volcanic ash can play a significant role, sometimes making the moon so dark that a lunar eclipse loses its distinctive red hue. Some historians have used historical accounts of particularly dark lunar eclipses to trace past volcanic activity because this impact is so obvious. 
there are two distinct parts to Earth's shadow. Patel stated, the umber refers to the much darker inner circle of the shadow that is surrounded by the outer circle or penumbra. Because of its tilted orbit, the moon always takes a different route through these shadow regions. Patel stated, you'll get a total lunar eclipse if it passes through the umbra. Skywatchers will see a partial lunar eclipse, with only a portion of the moon obscured, if the moon crosses the umbra and penumbra. It should come as no surprise that we refer to it as a penumbral lunar eclipse if the moon only passes through the penumbra. It is highly unlikely that casual observers of the sky will notice any significant changes. Patel stated, lunar eclipses occur two to five times a year. Every three years, you typically experience two total lunar eclipses. However, these eclipses occur all over the planet. Patel said that if you stay in the same place, you might see a total lunar eclipse once every 2.5 years. That contrasts sharply with the regularity of total solar eclipses. In the next three to four centuries, there won't be more than one total solar eclipse at any given location on Earth. Patel stated, the great thing about a lunar eclipse is that it occurs at full moon. Therefore, you ought to be able to see at least some of it if you are on the night side of the Earth. That contrasts with a solar eclipse, for which you must carefully determine your location. Additionally, the duration of a lunar eclipse makes it easier to observe than a solar eclipse. The total part of a lunar eclipse can last up to an hour and even slightly more, Patel said. A solar eclipse might only last a few minutes. Simply put, you need to look up at the right time and pray that the sky is clear of clouds. Patel claims that a lunar eclipse also raises fewer safety concerns. You shouldn't look at the sun during a solar eclipse, but you won't have any problems if you look at the full moon at night. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section. And if you enjoy our content, and never want to miss a video, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.